Hello everyone, this is Doc Almighty and welcome to Immersive Engineering tutorial number six where we continue our look at power generation and looking at the lightning rod multi-block construct. So let's jump right into how we build it really quickly. This will be a really quick episode. There's not a lot to uh, lightning rods, so I'm just going to show you how they work, give you a couple tips and tricks, and we will wrap this one up really quickly. All right, so we need to create nine lightning rod base blocks to create one of these lightning rods. To do, to do that, you need four steel ingots, one steel fence, one HV capacitor, two electrum wire coils, and a high voltage wire coil, like so. Obviously, you need to do this nine times to get one uh, lightning rod. All right, so looking at some of the blocks that are in the recipe, Really briefly, high voltage wire coil consists of eight of these HV wire coils around an iron ingot to give you that high voltage wire coil. Likewise, for the two electrum wire coils, it's simply eight MV wire coils around an iron ingot, and you need two of those. And for the HV capacitor, it's three steel ingots, a block of lead, a block of redstone, two aluminum ingots, and two treated wood planks like so. Okay, so to create this, once you have your nine blocks, all you have to do is, is align them in a three by three configuration and take your engineer's hammer and right click it on this center block. Bam, there you have your lightning rod. Then all you have to do after that is stack up a bunch of these steel fences into the sky and create a wire mesh like this of steel fences. Now a couple things to note. The, 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 the lightning rod doesn't actually attract lightning. It, it computes the chances of you getting a lightning strike itself. So it has, really has nothing to do with what's around us. You can't put blocks around it that create some sort of lightning and expect it to hit this thing. It's, that's not going to happen it calculates the chances of being struck by lightning by uh, some sort of algorithm, but the significant factors are how high, or more specifically, how many of these steel fence posts are, are stacked on top of the base. So how high the actual rod itself is is a big factor, and how large your steel mesh is. Now, the steel mesh or the steel fence mesh, whatever you want to call it, has a maximum size of 256 blocks. So if you did a perfect square, that's a 16 by 16 uh, matrix of these uh, steel fences. Now, the it doesn't really matter how high in the world your lightning rod base block is. In fact, if you're high in the world, you're probably limiting your chances to get a lightning strike. The optimum configuration is for the lightning rod base construct like this to be at bedrock and run steel fences all the way up and have your steel mesh at the max Y level. That is That gives you the very highest chance to get a lightning strike. So that kind of will show you sort of how this works. So I mean you don't obviously that takes a whole lot of steel uh, and honestly I've tested this configuration several times and I get lightning strikes once I have some thunder within just a few minutes. So it's it's there's no real unless you're just creating there's no real need unless you're just creating a you're trying to create a lightning strike every few seconds. You want to create a pretty reliable sense of power out of it. You'll have to invest a lot of steel to get there. So anyway, um, for your mesh net, obviously as you can see here, you can you can connect multiple lightning rods to the same mesh net. Now, generally speaking, I've, ha I've had one freak chance where a lightning uh, bolt struck, and I thought it powered up both uh, lightning rod bases, but in sub I haven't seen that again, so I'm wondering if I made a mistake and one of them was already full. All the other lightning strikes I saw hit this mesh net only powered one of these at a time, so it, it would take generally one lightning strike per lightning rod to fill it up with power. Now about the power itself, when you look at it, you can tell if you look at the Wayla tooltip, if I could stop moving here, 
uh, the 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 lightning rod base stores 16 million RF, so it stores a good bit. Uh, and when the lightning strike hits, it instantly powers it up to 16 million RF. So it's a pretty strong source of power when you have the weather. Uh, so if you're just relying on random weather, this isn't such a reliable source. But if you can put this in a dimension that always has rain and thunder, or you can reliably produce either lightning through some sort of ritual and a magic mod, or a weather generator block and attack mod, this might be a reliable source of main power, but generally speaking, this is something you want to use uh, to augment your existing power system to just collect you know, extra stored RF uh, when you do ha happen to have some lightning rain. So what we're going to do now, uh, just to demo the lightning strike so you know what it looks like, I'm going to go ahead and turn weather on. And we're going to wait for a lightning strike. I'll cut away so that you're not having to wait with me. And we'll cut back in uh, right before the lightning strikes and show you how that, what that looks like. And I'll go down and show you how it uh, created that 16 million RF. See you in a minute. Boom, there you have it. That was quick. That was less than a minute. So the lightning hit on the mesh net over here. Let's see. You can see right there from the tooltip, 16 million RF. And over here, it's still at zero, so it just powered the one. But that's good. Uh, 16 million RF, I'll take it. Uh, and that really is all there is to lightning rods. There's, there's not much more to it. So if you liked the episode, please leave a like. If you didn't, please let me know that too. I'm, I'm always looking for uh, constructive criticism. And if you want to see more of these videos, please consider subscribing. That always helps. Uh, otherwise, until next time, go forth and be awesome.